Will you pray with me? Lord, we boast in your power to save. Lord, I praise you for saving sinners. Father, you accomplished what we could never do. And Lord, we come to you today to worship you, to give you the glory that you deserve through this service, through our lives. Lord, please be glorified. And I pray all this in the beautiful name of our Savior Jesus. Amen. As we prepare for the Lord's table, will you take your Bible? And if you don't have a Bible, men will be passing out Bibles. Just raise your hand. They will put a Bible in your hand. And I ask that you would open your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. As we prepare... Scripture teaches us that this time in our service is set as a reminder. In a moment, they're going to distribute a small piece of cracker in a small cup of juice. And this cracker and juice also serve as a reminder. And as we prepare to take communion, we are instructed from Scripture to remember what our Savior has accomplished. The cracker is a reminder of his physical incarnation in the body that he freely gave up. God became man. And, and the cup represents and reminds us of the sacrificial death that Jesus, when he went to the cross, what he accomplished, he satisfied the penalty of sin. We also remember at this time the resurrection, Jesus conquering death, conquering sin. And when we take communion, we're proclaiming the kingdom of his return, his coming kingdom. So to help us prepare our hearts, will you read with me 2 Corinthians chapter 5? We will be reading verses 14 and 15. For the love of Christ controls us, having concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died. And he died for all so that they who might no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. I want to call attention to four realities from these two verses. The first reality you see is Christ for the love of Christ. That, that love of Christ is his voluntarily giving up his body for sinners. Christ's love is seen in his willingness to freely go to the cross. He gave up his body as a substitutionary payment for the penalty of sin. The second reality you see there, it says, love of Christ controls us. For the Christian, for, for you and I as Christians, what Christ has already done, his love on our behalf, should motivate us to live and worship him. We should desire to live righteously in a holy life. The third reality is found in the end of verse 14. You see the word for. It says that, that one died for all. That for indicates on behalf of, in place of, Jesus he, in his, when he sacrificed his body, he satisfied the Father's wrath. Jesus accomplished for us what we could never accomplish for ourselves. And fourthly, I want to point out that all died. 
And this phrase is best understood looking at verse 15. And he died for all so that they who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. Believers have died to their former self-centered, self-loving life and now live a new life in Christ where we desire to live righteously in a holy life. Christians, take time to prepare your heart for communion. Remind yourself of what Christ has done. Consider these realities as you prepare for communion. But I realize in a room this size, there are probably many that, that this is not your testimony. You would not proclaim to be a Christian. If this describes you, Scripture gives us a very clear warning to not participate at this time in the service. We're glad you're here at our service, but this part of the service is not for those that do not believe. Because this time of service is for those that are proclaiming everything that Jesus says he accomplished, what the Bible teaches about who Jesus is. And so please just let the elements pass you by if this is not you. If you desire to have an understanding of what Jesus has accomplished when he died on the cross and when he rose again, please talk to me, talk to whoever brought you, talk to one of the elders. Our desire is that you would not leave here today without an understanding of what Christ has accomplished for a lost and dying world. So men, please bring us the elements. When your heart is ready, please take communion on your own and I will come up and close our time in prayer.